the Killer Animal Foundation was set up in 1994 by Geraldine O'Hanlon, um, a rescue centre for sick, injured and abused animals of um, all species. We decided to set up the, the wildlife unit back in uh, 2012 as we've seen an increase in wildlife casualties coming through the gate. Uh, we also learned that there wasn't many places for wildlife to go um, when they got injured or sick. Um, so we take um, wildlife from all over the country, we rescue them, we re rehabilitate them and eventually release them back into the wild. We work with many rescues and organisations around the country. Um, and we have a keen interest in conservation, so it's great for us to work with uh, the Irish Wildlife Trust in helping our native wildlife. It's great for us as well because you know we get to see individual cases firsthand. We're normally dealing with things on a kind of a regional and a national level, so to actually come in and see individual cases and follow how the animals are doing and to actually see animals close up like this is just fabulous for us as well. Yeah, brilliant. This is Roisin, and um, she was brought to us. Um, after a member of the public uh, rang us for looking for help, she was out walking her dog by a canal um, not too far away from us and found this little bundle um, cold and, and very quiet and, and, and visibly something was wrong with her. So she's been here two weeks now and she's already looking great um, and lively, um, but she is, does need to be hand-reared um, for another couple of months and then she'll be released back into the wild. Most people in Ireland aren't aware that there's actually a national uh, programme in place culling badgers across the country. Um, this programme, as Con said, is nationwide. It uh, costs 3.6 million a year and is carried out by a team of 100 contractors. So that's paid for with taxpayers' money at the end of the day. Up till now, we've taken out 97,000 badgers since the mid 80s. That's about 7,000 a year. And uh, last year, as an end result of 3.6 million spent, there were 55 cattle less in the country with TB. Recently we received a call from a member of the public um, about an injured badger and um, we sent out one of our volunteers and when she got there um, she noticed that the badger had been trapped in a snare. Unfortunately for the badger her injuries were so bad and even after operating um, we were unable to save the badger but um, we later found out the badger had been there for four days so it's quite a cruel and um, awful thing to happen to the badger. This is what is the weapon of choice for the, the programme. Uh, it's a badger snare, or in EU speak, it's called a stopped body restraint. Unfortunately, uh, it's an indiscriminate means of capture, so you have badgers that are not TB infected being caught in that, and most of the time you're talking about 80% of badgers being uninfected. A further tragic aspect to this is that um, every year lactating females are culled, and this results in cubs like Roisin starving slowly to death underground. Um, there's a big dilemma, uh, with, unfortunately, for Roisin. Um, we have to try and pick a very safe area for her um, to be released. Of course, there is a lot of um, snaring, or government snaring, and also illegal snaring. So there is a dilemma that, unfortunately, Roisin might come to some harm in the future. Um, but we can't keep a badger, um, a wild animal, um, in captivity forever. So uh, it is actually a huge dilemma for us at the moment.